commander killed, three SUNY Geneseo hockey players named All-Americans, and more up right now. New scene starts right now. Good evening. Today is Monday, March 28th. I'm Laura Rickey. And I'm William Antonelli, and here are your top stories. Pentagon officials have reported that a top ISIL commander was killed by American forces this week. The ISIL commander, who has been described as the terrorist group's largest financer, was killed while traveling. American forces traveling by helicopter had originally hoped to capture him, but the plan changed before they could land. The helicopters then fired on the vehicle, killing the commander. U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter has stated that, the, that ISIL was steadily being drained of funds. This commander's death will only exacerbate that. Carter went on to say that the U.S. is, quote, systematically eliminating ISIL's cabinet. This news comes just days after a series of deadless, deadly terrorist attacks in Brussels, all of which ISIL has taken credit for. After Tuesday's twin site suicide bombings in Brussels that killed 31 people, Belgian police raids are displaying the expanding crackdowns on terrorist activity. Belgian bomb units swept through the district at the heart of the attack on Friday in an attempt to thwart future attacks. The underscored widening security fears even as Secretary of State John F. Kerry and European allies are looking to sharpen strategies against the Islamic State. Kerry said towards the Islamic State, quote, We will not rest until we have eliminated your nihilistic beliefs and cowardice from the face of the earth, end quote. The raid since the attack have been successful so far, uncovering bomb building supplies and leading to the arrest of one person. Thousand ga thousands gathered in Maryland's Prince George's County on Friday for the funeral of a county police officer who was shot by another officer. Officer Ja'Kai Colson was killed in a March 13th shooting. According to reports, the shooter was started by a man who plotted out an ambush on officers inside a certain station. Colson was off duty when he arrived at the scene and was fatally shot by a fellow officer who thought he was a criminal. Colson was 28 and would have celebrated his 29th birthday last week. Three county officers are being held in connection with the shooting. Law enforcement officers around the state praised Colson's bravery and have stated that Colson will, quote, forever be remembered as a true hero. Three SUNY Geneseo hockey players were named All-Americans by the American Hockey Coaches Association on Thursday night. Junior forward Stephen Collins, junior forward Trevor Hills, and sophomore defenseman Pat Condon were recognized for their exemplary athletic abilities. Collins was named the SUNYAC tournament's most valuable player. He's currently tied for first in the nation with 22 goals and tied for ninth with 25 assists. Hills is tied for first nationally with 22 goals, including a Division III best 12 power play tallies. He was also voted the SUNYAC Player of the Week on three occasions throughout the year. Condon is raised eighth nationally among all defensemen with 0.81 points per game and is tied for sixth in assists. U.S. Marshals have captured an escaping overdose patient who walked out of treatment. Franklin Gay, 41, was taken into treatment after Livingston County officers watched him ingest drugs and begin to overdose. However, just a small while after being taken in, Gay walked out of the hospital, inciting a manhunt. According to officers, Gay may have fled because he holds prior felony convictions. Upon being recaptured, Gay was charged with felony tampering with physical evidence and escape, as well as other drug charges. On Friday, Gay was remanded to jail without bail after the judge denied a request that the charges be dismissed. Issues are arising as chocolate manufacturers in the UK are removing the word Easter from their holiday egg candies. With the new marketing, the eggs describe Easter as a festival of chocolate and loveliness, not a religious holiday. Chocolate companies are denying claims that they are trying to distance Easter eggs from their religious origin. Cadbury said, quote, We do not have a policy to drop Easter from our eggs, end quote. A recent survey on YouGov showed that four in five British citizens want to keep the word Easter on egg packaging. More than 80 million chocolate eggs are sold every year in the UK, but over the past five years, some manufacturers have either removed the word Easter from their boxes or reduced the size of the word and put it on the back of the box. So what will the weather be like this week? The answer and more of your nightly news when we come back. Welcome back to News Scene. Now, here is the update on your weather news. This evening, it will be mostly cloudy with a drop in temperature to about 40 degrees. Looking ahead to later this week, 
we can expect the temperatures to warm up a bit. Tuesday, we can expect a high at 64. It will be partly cloudy throughout the day and drop down to a low of 48 in the evening. Wednesday, we can expect a high of 67 and a low of 51 in the evening. Thanks, Will. Wesley's up next with your world news. Stay right here on GSTV. Good evening, I'm Wesley Ebersole with your world news. More news from Belgium in the wake of last week's bombings. In police raids, at least six people have been discovered to have been involved in the attacks within the European nation. It has even been discovered that a man by the name of Najim was also involved in the attacks in Paris several months ago. Perhaps most disturbing was a plot that was uncovered that might have targeted a nuclear power plant. Apparently, only after extensive surveillance was discovered by the would-be attackers was the mission aborted. This discovery comes soon after the report was released that dictated the fear that terrorists could create a, dir a dirty bomb, a regularly explosive bomb with added nuclear material, with relative ease. Russia and the United States are cooperating to set an uh, August deadline for peace talks in Syria. A representative from the Kremlin, Sergei Lermerov, dictated that we have agreed to th that the pressure on all sides must be increased. It is suggested by some that the recent attacks in Brussels may have something to do with the increased sense of expediency in the ceasefire talks. However, the Assad regime is more than reluctant to agree to any peace negotiations that would require the current ruler of the Syrian nation to step down. Tensions are, as hi are high as the world looks to Russia to see if they will favor the continued Assad regime or the preservation of the Syrian state. And now more news from Asia as North Korea parades a prisoner in front of the press that they claim is a U.S. spy. After just a few months ago, when the nation displayed a detained college student in front of the cameras, the nation is doing it again. The prisoner, who was identified as Kim Jong-kul, told the cameras that he had been spying for the South's intelligence agencies, trying to get information on the North's military, as well as trying to spread, quote, religious ideas. These are all very serious crimes in North Korea, and indeed several other individuals of South Korean or United States citizenship have been detained in a similar manner. Their sentences range from 15 years of hard labor to life sentences. <laughs> One. Hi, I'm Annie Renaud with your entertainment news. Comedian Gary Shandling died Thursday, March 24th at age 66 in Los Angeles. Los Angeles police officers were sent to Shandling's home based on a medical emergency report. Shandling was pronounced dead after being moved to a hospital. According to Fox News, Shandling's death appears to be from natural causes, but medical records will be examined to determine the cause of Shandling's death. Shanling was brought up in Tucson, Arizona, and is known for his two shows, It's Gary Shanling's Show and The Larry Sanders Show. The piano duo Duo Oma performed at Geneseo on March 26 in Wadsworth Auditorium, finishing Geneseo's Limelight and Accent Series. The duo consists of Palestinian Bashar Harani and Israeli Yaron Colbert. According to an article in the Livingston County News, they joined forces for a musical collaboration that intends to transcend political um, and national differences. Haroni and Colbert have performed in Europe, the U.S., and Asia, and hope through their performances to spread the message of peace. James Mars was arrested for neglecting to return a 2002 VHS rental movie entitled Freddy Got Fingered in Concord, North Carolina. The arrest warrant charges Myers with failure to return rental property, which is a misdemeanor and may result in a fine of up to $200. The rental store J&J's video, where Myers obtained the video, is closed. Myers was pulled over while driving his daughter to school by a police officer for a broken taillight. 25 minutes after the officer ran Myers' license plate, he told Myers that there was a warrant of his arrest since 2002. Myers said that he has been pulled over since 2002, but was never told about the missing tape. Myers' court date will be on April 27th. Thanks, Annie. Well, that wraps up today's edition of News Scene. Be sure to tune in Wednesday for our next broadcast. Remember, GSTV can film your clubs and events. I'm Willie Mantinelli. And I'm Lori Ricky. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, Geneseo.